They saw a black man and as soon as they saw me, it's like they wanted to arrest. They didn't even want to listen. They just unpacked my entire car for no reason at all, looking for drugs or an and he sunk something, but found nothing. And even though African-American men are just 6% of the population, they make up 40% of those unarmed fatalities. That's one every nine days. And far too often, racial profiling is at the root of these deaths. So for people of color, that means almost everyone's a target. By Design with host Kathy Holloway Hill. Kathy is a strong, powerful voice. She entertains, informs, and inspires her audiences everywhere she goes. Living by Design, and we have an amazing show for you today. Did you know that 5% of the world's population is right here in the United States, and 25% of the world's prisoners are also right here in the United States? That's more prisoners than soldiers in all of the armed forces. That's more correctional officers than the Marines, and more prisons than Walmarts. Now what's wrong with that picture? Today, I am very fortunate to have a young man by the name of Philip and his mentor, Deborah, and we're gonna talk about this and dive into this mass incarceration topic that means a lot to me and it should mean a lot to you. Philip and Deborah, welcome to Living by Design. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. I am so pleased to have you. Now, I'm going to allow you to introduce yourselves because I just gave first names. So, Philip, you want to go first? And Yeah, my name is uh, Philip Roberts. Um, I was incarcerated for uh, two years at the Plainfield Correctional Facility um, where I met Miss Deborah Devines. Uh, she leads a workshop, a creative writing workshop. and. Um, when I was released from there, you know, she kept in contact with me and, you know, became a mentor and, you know, helped me to spread the word about, you know, mass incarceration and just raise awareness. Excellent. And Deborah? And I'm Deborah Devines. I'm the founder of Indiana Prison Writers Workshop. Uh, I met Philip along with uh, several others in the creative writing class that I founded and led. And uh, he was uh, a bright star and uh, put in the hard work while he was incarcerated and wrote very well and fortunate to uh, serve as his mentor uh, and help um, provide him with some opportunities, speaking engagements and, and writing opportunities on different blogs. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Now, the first thing I want to ask either one of you, define mass incarceration for those of our viewers who are unfamiliar with that term. Wow, mass incarceration really is, um, I would say, how the government, you know, goes about arresting people at a high, a high rate. Um, and the statistics show that, you know, one out of 17 Caucasian males might end up going to prison. One out of seven um, Hispanics might go to prison. And one out of every three African Americans might end up going to prison. You know, and that, that I mean, that there is, you know, very alarming. You, know. you think? <laughs> Uh, not only is it very alarming, it's disturbing, and that's why I can't just sit here and do nothing. Right. This has been a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. Right. Why are the statistics so off balance for, is it racial profiling? Is, what, what is it? I would say it's a, it's a little bit of a, a lot, really. Um, they do the, you know, the, the, the way they sentence 
people, you know, you might have a, a Caucasian male and an African male commit the same crime, but the African male would get, you no, know, the African American male would get you no know, more time. Uh, just basically, you no know, racial profiling. Um, then also, uh, you know, they, 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 they got the mandatory minimums uh, on the sentencing, which may, basically means, you know, if you commit a certain crime, you have to serve a certain amount of time, you know, at least that amount of time, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, they get scared to, you know, go to trial. Yes. So they, they'll take that plea agreement to serve that minimum amount. Oh, okay. And then, you know, they'll, they'll actually take that risk of, you know, serving that time instead of, going to trial and having to serve, you know, the maximum amount, maximum amount. So that's why you have a lot of, you know, convictions, right. you know, because people are willing to take that, you know, that plea agreement, mm -hmm. even if they're innocent, yeah. you know, they'll take that plea agreement yeah. instead of, you know, going to trial and trying to beat it and end up serving a, a lifetime in prison. Now, let me ask you, if you don't mind sharing with our viewers, what was your reason for being incarcerated? Okay, so back when I was 19 years old, you know, I was kind of doing you know, good for myself. I was working two jobs, you know, I was on my own, I was putting myself through college, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, money was just coming up short, so an opportunity presented itself, mm -hmm. you know, to make some extra cash, yeah. you know, and um, I took that chance, and... Um, now, is that selling drugs? No, it was, uh, I got a... a convicted of burglary. Okay. So, um, you know, a couple guys, you know, they asked me if, uh, you know, if I wanted to go make some money, all I had to do was drive. So I was like, you know what? I contemplated on it and I was like, man, I need it. So I took that chance. I did it. You know, I was driving and um, I didn't get arrested right away. Did they go in and actually? They went in and. At gunpoint? No, it wasn't. It wasn't no at guns. gunpoint. No okay, guns. Okay. I, don't, I don't think anyone was there. Um, but yeah, they did the crime. You know, I got paid like five hundred dollars, something like that. It kind of helped me over a little bit, mm -hmm. but I didn't. We didn't get in trouble right then and there. Well, I didn't get in trouble right then and there. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, I was nineteen. I didn't get arrested until I was twenty-four. Oh, okay. So they were just. So you kept doing it. No, no, they oh. were uh, they were investigating that one crime the whole time. So uh, I eventually ended up getting you no, know, getting detained for questioning. Okay. So. Um, they they took me to the precinct and showed me all these pictures, you know. And it was like, man, we know you didn't, you know, you didn't do this by yourself. So if you just tell us the other names, you know, we can cut you a deal and, you know, this and this and that. And I was like, man, look, I was told in these situations not to say anything, so I'd like to ask for my lawyer, whatever. So um, I asked for my lawyer, you know, I didn't tell them, you know, anybody else that was, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a part of it. So they... Um, they charged me with uh, a Class B felony burglary, okay. which I could have served up to 20 years yeah. in prison for that. So, and so your attorney got you off with. Uh, I ended up getting uh, an eight-year uh, sentence, okay. which was broken down. Uh, I did a two-to-one uh, in Department of Corrections. I did four to two on community corrections, which was house arrest. And then I had two years of probation. Altogether, that equals eight years, um, eight actual years. Um, so. Okay, and I'm gonna just stop you right here because this is an incredible conversation. And we need to quick take a quick break and don't go anywhere because we will be right back. Welcome back to Living by Design. We are still here with Deborah and Philip, and we are having a great conversation. So, Philip, I just want to talk a little bit about your mindset when you were incarcerated. What did you deal with emotionally, spiritually, mentally, depression, anxiety, those types of things? How, how does it affect you when, when you're, you're serving? Oh, man, that's a, a huge, huge huge impact on on you when you're uh, when you're incarcerated um, just you know worrying about family uh, you know things like that um, myself you know I I got to a point to where I didn't have the will or want to get up and do anything mm -hmm. right so um, you know I had talked to the the psychiatrist there you know and uh, you know he ran through the 
the little questions or whatever, and uh, he diagnosed me with depression. Mm. And um, you know, he put me what on some. What did they do about it? Yeah, he put me on some medication um, to help with that. Um, it kind of helped, I guess, um, but I was still just worried about, you know, my daughter. I have a little girl, mm -hmm. and um, you know, she was two years old when I got incarcerated, and just the whole time I was just wondering whether or not she was going to remember me when I got out, knowing that I had to do, you know, a total of two years. Yeah. Um, so that really took a toll on me, and then. Um, you know, one day a message came over the communication system talking about a creative writing class, right? So um, I kind of thought about it for a second. I was like, man, should I do it? You know, I really didn't feel like doing anything else, you know? So I was like, man, let's, let's try something different. This is something, you know, totally different from anything else the prison was offering. Right. So um, I was like, okay, let's give it a try. So I signed up for the class. Then, um, you know, the first day, you know, she, uh, Miss Deborah gave us a, a writing prompt uh, that was titled, um, if you were a bird, where would you go? What type of bird would you be? You know, would you fly alone or with another flock of birds, right? And then she gave us 15 minutes to do this writing prompt. And, you know, and she said, go. And then as soon as she said, go, you know, I just disappeared, you know. I uh, looked out the window and, you know, I became this bird, you know, and it gave me a sense of freedom, you know, while being incarcerated, you know, and then ever since that, you know, I just kept going back, going back every week, and, you know, it actually showed me the power of writing, you know, and what writing can do, because you can be anybody, you can laugh, you can yell, you can yes. cry, and yes. especially being in a prison setting, you know, it's kind of, you know, look down upon if you, you know, show emotion or show, you know, yeah. signs of weakness. Mm -hmm. So you can actually do that while you're writing, you know, and get all of that out, you know. So um, that really, that really helped me, you know, uh, That was, get would you that. say, kind of a turning point? Yes, yeah. it was. It was very transformative, actually. That's great. That's great. And Deborah, <laughs> oh my goodness, you are such an incredible, and I have to say, I, I'm very spiritual, faith-based, and God put you there. It was meant for you to go to Deborah's class because this was part of your journey. Deborah is part of your journey. And I am so grateful to you for doing this. So talk a little bit about your ministry sure. and going into the prison. So it's a not-for-profit. It's Indiana Prison Writers Workshop. And uh, my background is a TV news reporter. And so uh, I covered crime in the court's beats and uh, left that that uh, a decade ago and did communications, nonprofit communications, but I always had a heart for storytelling and, and learning the rest of the story. As a crime reporter, I covered the angle of just a law enforcement officer, never knowing what the barriers of those who are who have been convicted were. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to do something. And so I went into uh, one of the facilities, uh, a playing field, and led their victim impact class because that's what the need was at the time. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, I challenged the gentleman in the class to write, to write a story. And I realized I, I was onto something, right? It was moving, it was powerful. They hadn't felt free like this. And so uh, the next day, um, I went about creating uh, this creative writing workshop. And so then um, I didn't, no longer did the other class and, and then led this creative writing workshop. And that's where I met Phil. And at first, you know, I was, I was off to a little bit of a rocky start, but um, I think, you know, I found my way and that um, I really built up this program and, and put together this 12 week curriculum. Um, I, I got together a, a group of local authors uh, in town and we really built this program to what it is today. And I incorporated it into a 501c3, a not-for-profit in September of 2018. Mm -hmm. I had art shows. We've been on the news. We had the news come in, uh, Fox 59 and Indie Star, and showcase the men. Phil was there during that time. And so that's really the evolution. It was born out of wanting to help and give back. Um, I have a heart for those uh, who have struggling, you know, struggling populations. And what I discovered uh, was that they, they all had some sort of barrier, Absolutely. whether it was trauma, childhood trauma, whether it was poverty, whether it was addictions. And so to be able to get them to express that and understand that through hard writing prompts yes. um, made a difference. And Absolutely. it gave me purpose. And mm, so that's excellent. Now, I have a book here. 
Can this be purchased on Amazon? It can be, yes. Yay. Okay, so that and is, this, go ahead. So that is about the year I spent uh, leading group workshops. I no longer go in and lead. I have a team of volunteers who do that, but uh, some of Phil's writing is in that book as well as a so few it's a of the other guys. It's a compilation of short stories. Uh, it weaves in a little bit about my past and why I decided to work with the men and what I gained as well, but it really focuses on them and how like Phil said, how transformative it was, and meeting Phil in class, and, and the growth that I saw in him and in his writing, along with several of the other men. And so, you know, I'm, I'm cheering for them, I'm rooting for them, and while I no longer go in and lead group workshops, because I have a team that does that, um, I'm, I'm excited and, and honored to be in their space, in their creative space, and showcase their work. There's a lot of raw talent and hidden talent behind the wall. And I want to thank you for, because I know you were introduced to me as Phil's mentor. And I want to thank you for that because we need more mentors. We need more role models. We need more people to step up and help these individuals because yes, there's a lot of them that want they get out and then they do the same old thing and end up back in there. But there are a lot of individuals like Phil who Yes, they just made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So they have to pay, do the time. Right. But when they get out, they want to change their life. They want to be transformed. He was already transformed while he was in there. So he just wanted to continue that transformation once he got out. That's exactly so right. So we need more people like you. So I applaud you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank now, you. what made you select him as one of your mente mentees? His dedication, his perseverance. Um, he is a great writer, he's a great artist, um, tattoo artist as well. He, he proved himself in class. And you know, I, I had an art show during the time he was incarcerated and his work was, was part of that, um, as was some, some people on the outside uh, who were previously incarcerated. And so just um, seeing how, how clever he is and wanting the rest of the community to see how clever he is as well. Um, you know, I'm a, he's, he's really the only person that, that, that I mentor. My husband helped, uh, helped him create a cover letter as well, which he didn't need much help because he's a storyteller, right? So he, he gained all those skills inside. But like you said, we need more people to, to take on yes. the mentorship role. I never had a mentor growing up, and so I've had to be my own mentor. Mm -hmm. And so for Phil to call me um, or email me, you know, there's, you know, he, where he needs some advice. Exactly. I'm, I'm here to, to provide any advice that exactly. you may need. And, and that's one of my goals is to try to help people because I know I needed that. I did not have that right. growing up. And, you know, my self-esteem was in the toilet. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Phil is, um, you know, since I've met, since we've worked together on the outside, he is he's in demand with speaking engagements. He'll be, he'll be uh, kicking off uh, a speaking engagement. He'll be speaking at Pace Indy. They have a, a fundraiser in November uh, called Art Spoken. So uh, check that out. Buy tickets to the event. Pace Indy helps those who well, have well, been incarcerated. Hold on, yeah. before you say that, because I really want to get more into that. Okay. We're going to take another quick break, and we will be right back. Welcome back. This is a very, very important topic, and I am so excited to have the opportunity to be here. So, Deborah and Philip, we are talking about, before we went to break, you were talking about a program called PACE. Right, right. So continue with that. Sure. We're extremely pleased to, to partner with uh, IUPUI and PACE on a number of upcoming projects. Uh, PACE has their annual fundraiser, PACE Indy, uh, in November, where Phil will be speaking and sharing some of his work. Yay. As Yep, yep. And so we're, we're excited just what the future holds for him. And, you know, I hope more opportunities come his way so everyone can see how talented he is. He's, he's a natural storyteller. And I'm just honored to have worked with him for that year inside prison. Yay, that's awesome. Now, do you have yeah. a website? Do you have a website? Yeah. And how can people get in touch with Phil? I know you're on Facebook because I saw a post, actually. That's how I, I met you when I saw your post, and it was so well written. Now I know why, <laughs> because it was so well written. I'm an author. Authors always notice those types of things, and I was like, whoa, this young man is just, he is ready. He is. 
I used to tease him that I was his publicist, <laughs> un unpaid of course, oh, but right. no, but any, anyone who wants to see his work, I house some of his stories on my website, which is inprisonwritersworkshop.org. Okay. Uh, again, Indiana Prison Writers Workshop, a so not-for-profit, inprisonwritersworkshop.org. Okay, and it's on your screen. Yeah, and then we also have a Facebook page, Indiana Prison Writers Workshop. Okay, excellent. And then you're on Facebook. Yes, I'm on Facebook as Dewan Roberts, D E. J U A N Roberts. Okay. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Phil underscore the underscore ink. Phil um, underscore, underscore the, the underscore ink. ink. Yes, okay, Phil great. the ink. Yeah. I like that. It also showcases uh, my tattoo work and um, it also uh, has, you know, stories about my past events that I've, uh, that I've spoken in. So. Now we didn't really talk a lot about your tattoo work, but just real quick, mm -hmm. you just, you know, have you been doing that for a long time? I've always been interested in getting a tattoo, but I'm, I'm scared. Uh, well, I can Does get it you hurt? Uh, well, uh, people have different pain tolerances, but uh, I've been tattooing since 2016. Oh, so. okay. Okay, well, can, can you do like a little bitty one? Yeah, yeah, of course, I got you. Like I a little you. star, right? <laughs> I know, right, exactly, a little microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. that's great. So you said November. Now I want to make sure we get the date right. for the fundraiser. So that's November. Check on their website. Okay. Uh, Pace Indy. Pace Indy. Yep. Yep. And then uh, Phil and I will be teaming up on a few things for 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 my organization, Indiana Prison Writers Workshop. So just. Uh, find us and, and learn more about us and you know we can, we can come and speak at, at any business corporation nonprofit um, so we, we just enjoy spreading the message and and the power of, of writing um, has transformed his life and given him new opportunities that he yes. may not have otherwise had and right. it's making him him proud and he should be proud of himself and he is it's making others around him I'm proud as well him. right? Yeah. I know. Yeah, same, same. Yeah. So, so good work. <laughs> and, and, and the reason I wanted to do this show, because mass incarceration is a huge issue, right. concern in our country, right. you know, with the stats that I read when we first started the show, and just to see an example, yeah, go ahead, Dylan. I encourage everybody to get involved somehow, whether you know it's contacting your political office, whether it's volunteering inside a correctional facility. Uh, Indiana Department of Correction has great programs that, that you can learn how to get involved uh, in what you know areas of, of interest. Uh, you just call them up or, or log on to their website. Uh, but you know, mass incarceration, it seems like it's only getting worse. Mm. Um, you know, I'm reading a book right now called Solidad, Solidad Brother by George Jackson. In, and it's letters that he wrote in the 60s to his mom and dad while he was serving time in prison. And it's troubling to see uh, just where we are today, very similar to where things were in the 60s, right? Uh, the Black Panther movement and, and all that he endured in prison and the, the opportunities that he felt he did not have and was at a disadvantage because of his uh, black skin. And so, um, you know, I, I feel very empowered and passionate about uh, raising awareness of right. mass incarceration. Right. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. We're not going to get into those reasons, but you know, as far as the racism and just the 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 hate crimes and all the stuff that's going on in in our nation today, it's just it's sad. It's sad to me. So we've got to do everything in our power to make sure that we try to you know, counteract that or, or do whatever we can to, to improve that. So play a small part. Everybody play a small part. Exactly. Exactly. Now I, I want to mention again, this book can be purchased on Amazon. That's right. Where else? Anywhere? Uh, that's it. Okay. All right. So, so look for this book on Amazon because I want you to go out there and I want you to get this book because it has some of Phil's writings in it. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, I personally could not read it because I didn't want to get emotional. And this young man's, you did a great job. Thank you. With this workshop because his writing ability is, is I mean, it takes people years right. to be able to write as well as you have learned how to do this in a short period of time. How long does, how long did the workshop go last? A year. It lasted a full year. Yep. Every week for a year. Wow. It takes people some years and they still don't don't write well or the grammar is kind of all over the place or whatever the case may be. So I applaud you, young man. Thank you. And I am just so proud of you. You know, it, 
if you were my own son, I couldn't be more proud of the progress you've made and to come out and the speaking engagements and the things that you listed on that post when I saw it on Facebook, I'm like, wow, that is incredible. You have been a busy person. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I accomplished a lot in the past, you know, six, seven months, you know, and um, it was really all just, you know, to show that community correction, well, that correction officer, you know, like, <laughs> and, and, and just, you know, to kind of, I'm not going to go into a lot, but the Facebook post I saw was that a correctional officer, and this is, this is what our, our people have to deal with, a correctional officer told this young man, he was trying to, I guess, kind of get you worked up and get an argument started. And you just walked away because you said, I'm getting out in six months, so, you know, I'm not going to do I was getting out the next week, the following week. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're, you're getting out the following week. Yeah. And he was the one who said, oh, well, you'll be back in six months. Yeah. So for a correctional officer to say that, he was really trying to get you, get you worked up. So I'm proud of you for how you handled that. I'm proud of you for everything you're doing. Deborah, I'm so proud of you for all that you have accomplished. Thank you. And I wanna thank you both for sharing your journey and your story on Living by Design. Thank you for having us. You have Thank been you. incredible guests and you have just given us a wealth of knowledge. Thank you. Please get involved. We need your help. We thank you for joining us for this episode of Living by Design and we'll see you next week with another empowering episode. Good evening.